all across the northern hemisphere the sweet little violets are popping up in uh, people's yards and in rock piles and um, they're a little low growing plant and I wanted to share a few things about them because this is your moment to catch them. They really only bloom in bloom for about two weeks out of the year. Um, however, the leaves are quite often available for several months, about three months of the year. Um, and there's many medicinal parts to the violet. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, herbs for anxiety and depression in a, a little mini course I'm doing coming up. And this is one of the most wonderful herbs for anxiety. Um, when you make a medicine out of specifically the leaves or the flowers or the leaves and flowers combined, uh, you have an uplift of the heart. Um, some people call it like lifting the spirits, but it really the, that term, it, um, that concept is coming from an old word that you'll see in physiomedicalist texts called exhilarant. An exhilarant is something that awakens the spirit and enlivens us and, and makes us feel um, re, uh, uh, connected and, and alive. I'm going to say the word more alive. That's really what we mean by uplifting the spirits. Um, but Violet does it in such a unique way. It's not like you're uplifting the spirits and it becomes sort of erratic or spending of energy. It does it in such a calming way. It's a nervous system restorative because when you take the violets into you, you feel just peace and calm. And it is known as a remedy for nervousness. Um, and it's a remedy to help calm children um, uh, and I'll say a few things about the different parts so you'll hear that the leaf and the flower and the root are all used and this is true all parts of the plant have medicine um, however the roots are actually kind of a bitter tonic and if you take them in large doses they can be emetic nobody likes to take the roots um, however in Chinese medicine they harvest the whole plant root leaf and flower and all and they use that in sort of a different way but um, I want to talk specifically about the leaves and flowers because that's most practical and useful um, in terms of Western herbalism and um, as something that people enjoy taking and has lots of wonderful uses and benefits. So first I'll say the leaves, you know, see those beautiful leaves. They are um, little heart shaped leaves and you can have access to the leaves for, like I said, about three months of the year. And the leaves themselves are not aromatic. They're not smelly. They're, they're, just um, uh, nutritious and moistening. So they have the leaves themselves, you can dry them to make a tea. Um, and that is really the best way to, to take violet leaf. The leaves um, are loaded with antioxidants, very nutritious. They're as nutritive as nettles, really, except that they are moist, whereas opposed to nettles, it's very drying. Uh, nettles is very diuretic. You know, you take a bunch of nettles and after a few days, you're feeling like parched and chapped lips and you're peeing all the time because you're losing your water. Um, sort of the opposite with violets, it has a, a moistening property, so it rehydrates the tissues. Um, and it does have some anti-inflammatory properties, very mildly, it's just, it's anti-inflammatory through its antioxidant and nutritive content. Um, sort of like that concept of eating a lot of vegetables is um, anti-inflammatory because vegetables contain high amounts of antioxidants. There was actually a study done where people who eat high antioxidant rich vegetables, like more than five to eight servings a day, have better management of inflammation than people who take anti-inflammatory drugs. Side note, rather cool. But um, in that regard, so we find the anti-inflammatory properties of violet. It's not like you could just take one cup of violet tea and it would cure your you know, migraine headache or something. But if you're taking it persistently, like as a nutritive tea, uh, as a daily tonic, um, it's incredibly restorative. Uh, very, very nourishing, very moistening, um, does have calming benefits. So just drinking the violet leaf tea uh, can be a nice treatment for anxiety. Now, really what I want to talk to you about is the flowers because this is our window. This is the violet flower moment. You'll see I have two different colors here. I'll show you the pretty, there's the purple ones. I wish I could give you all smell-o-vision because that, that smell of the sweet violet, they call them viola odorata for a reason because they are odorous in a very delicious way. Um, they are sweet smelling. Here's a white violet. And the white violets do still have some smell, but not quite as much. Still the same flower composition. Um, and there's many, many species of violets. They're all fairly interchangeable. Um, I do think the ones that have the fragrance, the purple ones, the Viola odorata species in particular, contain the most amount of methyl salicylates. That's what that smell is. 
that smell, methyl salicylates, are the compound um, from the plant wintergreen that was originally used to make aspirin. The very first, it wasn't from willow bark. The very first aspirin that was derived in the late 1800s came from uh, wintergreen and it was the methyl salicylates that are in there. And so that's the smell you get from violets. And the flowers, I, I like to make a special violet flower medicine. There's many ways to make them. You can make violet flower into syrup. Um, I do a special violet flower glycerin alcohol mix, low alcohol, 30% alcohol with 30% glycerin. And the glycerin retains a lot of the volatile oils. So you can, um, whenever you add glycerin to it, a low alcohol tincture, you get all the aromatics out of the plant. And it's much more true to the original smell of the plant as opposed to just putting the flower straight into alcohol where you just lose a lot of the aromatics and it just becomes harsh burning on your tongue and um, people don't really enjoy the flavor of that. So I think that there is something to making our medicines touch our senses, delight us, be delicious. Um, that's not just like, making your medicines yummy it's 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 when you engage the senses you are stimulating vitality and certainly your all the constituents are present in fact you might even have more constituents because you have different solvents helping to extract the different components um, long story short alcohol really only extracts alkaloids it's not good at extracting a whole lot else whereas glycerin is really great for extracting aromatics and things that are smelly you put the two together and you have something that's a little more broad spectrum. So I'm saying all that because those are a couple of ways that you could preserve the medicine of the flowers. Um, I certainly know you can dry the flowers and just save them as a tea. People do make candied violet flowers and all sorts of wonderful treats with them. But the flowers themselves, I really love them for, and yes, they're much more effective for that heart lift. Um, the violet flower remedy is really specific for anxiety. So if I need something that's a little stronger than say the violet leaf, I'll be going for the violet flower. Like I said, you could dry them and combine them together in a tea and that would be just fine. Um, but the trapping of those aromatic um, fragrance oils in the, the flower in the form of a glycerin tincture, a glycerite combined with alcohol, you have something that is wonderful for headaches. It's really for um, a tension headache. There's different types of headaches. And so when you have a headache that's tense and it feels like your head's in a vice, the warming aromatics of the violet flower sort of relax the tension. It increases circulation and uh, can totally work very well for a headache. Um, certain kinds of like hangover headaches, I find uh, violets are really, very helpful for. Not that I'm encouraging y'all to get hangovers. Um, and um, there is also something more powerfully nerving. So nerving is something that calms the nervous system and really relaxes us. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share a little bit more about violets. Um, it is a wonderful remedy for anxiety. It's a nice sleepy remedy for children. It's a very mild, mild sedative. So, uh, you know, uh, mild like baby, <laughs> baby <laughs> treatments. Um, and it is equated that the amount of methyl salicylates in the violet flower concentrate would be something equivalent to um, like a third of a baby aspirin, but it's there. There is enough methyl salicylates to actually act like a baby aspirin. So, um, yeah, I, I do know that people take violet leaf tea on a regular basis to help moderate joint pain. Um, I haven't tried that one myself because I have so many other wonderful herbs I use for joint pain, but anyone who tries it, give me feedback. I want to know. Um, and now's the time to go catch those violet flowers. And I did make, I'll show you what it looks like. I did make, this is a batch of that, my violet flower tincture. It's the liquid has sucked most of the violets out of the blue. The blue color was all blue. Now they just look like ghost petals because <laughs> they're all white. Um, but this is that tincture, 30% alcohol, which I add, I use high proof alcohol. So I used straight 95% alcohol that I diluted. I put 30, I basically did my jar, a third of high proof alcohol, a third of water and a third of glycerin. And if you understand the math of that, it ends up being 30% alcohol, 30% glycerin. Um, and that makes an incredible medicine for nervousness, for anxiety, uh, for can't sleep for aches and pains and for headaches. So get your violets while you can.